All right, so now that uh, we have our basic mechanics put into the game where we can move around, shoot a projectile, hit a box, blow the box up, deal damage, um, what I want to focus on is how to create terrain in Unity. And you can kind of see here, this is a different scene that I made uh, before. We can see that, you know, we have ridges, mountains, hills, and stuff like that. We have textures applied. Uh, I've also done a skybox, so I'll show you a bit of that in this tutorial as well. So uh, let me hop back into my other scene. All right, so again, this is what we got so far. Blow that guy up, and not much, right? So to create terrain in Unity, it's pretty straightforward. First thing I'm going to do, though, is kill off the plane that we've been using because we don't need this so i'm going to left click on this hit delete go up to game object go to 3d object and click terrain and you're going to see this massive enormous piece of just white material sitting here and if we look over in the inspector by default these are the things that unity adds to it it has a transform position just like every other game object it has a terrain item which if we turn that off, you see it completely destroys the terrain. We have a terrain collider. So the collider is what will allow our character to fall and land on the terrain. So if we want to see that sort of an action here, if I hit play, um, we fall, we hit the terrain, and we're able to walk around on it. So if we take a look at the terrain component, what this component allows us to do is do a little bit of modification to terrain. So there's a raise lower command, there's a paint height command, uh, smooth heights out, you can paint textures on, you can place trees, uh, you can place details, and then there's also terrain settings which have an enormous amount of just customizations including modifying the width, length, height, and things of that nature. So if I check out like raise lower terrain, I'll choose like a large brush and you can see that I can sort of come on and sculpt the terrain out the way I feel like doing. Um, I can go to the smooth height section and I can sort of run over the areas I just did and it's going to smooth the vertices out a little bit. Uh, you can paint textures on. So like I could add a terrain texture if I wanted of say uh, like this plant. And we can see that it adds a whole bunch of texture here. And as you add textures, you can choose. Um, so say I add a second texture for this guy and I hit add. So now I can like I can paint that texture on if I feel like it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these because I want to show off. Well, let me undo all of this actually. I want to show off the terrain toolkit. So the terrain toolkit is a package for Unity that was made quite a while ago that still works in Unity 5. So what I recommend you do, go to Google, type in Unity Terrain Toolkit. And then here where it says Downloads Unity Terrain Toolkit from Google Code, click on that. And grab the zip file here for Terrain Toolkit 1.0.2.zip. Once it's downloaded, extract the zip file, open up the folder, and you should see a Unity package inside. To actually get that into your project, go up to Assets and go Import Package, go to Custom Package, uh, browse to the location that you just saved the file to and import the Unity Package file. Once you have it in your project, you should see it here under your Assets listed under Terrain Toolkit. So what I'm going to do now is under Terrain Toolkit, we want to grab the C-sharp script and just drag and drop that onto the terrain in your, in your editor here. And now what we see is the terrain tools kit script is attached to this terrain. Now this is basically a procedurally generated terrain script. So what you can do is here under the create section, you have different sorts of rendering methods like Veroni and Fractal and Perlin. I usually like the Perlin one. And I can look under like preset and choose rolling hills, for example. 
It's going to fill out a couple of different settings here. And if I hit Generate Perlin Terrain, you'll see that my terrain adopts this really odd shape. So I don't really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. I'm going to mess with these uh, settings a little bit. I'm going to put the frequency down to like 2, the amplitude down to about 0.5. And then I'm going to do a blend of about 0.64. That's a little bit better, but I still don't quite like that. I'm going to turn the blend down a little bit more so that's a little less drastic. So there I have some normal hills. So now I have this kind of normal hilly thing. You could go into a road and you can simulate uh, different forms of erosion such as thermal, hydraulic, and tidal. I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to really mess with these, but they can add some more character to your, uh, to your map here. And the one I want to... Well, the big one I want to look at is the texture setting. So under textures, you can procedurally generate textures for your terrain. So here I can hit add texture. And the first one it adds is a cliff texture. Now for the cliff texture over here, you can hit the select button. And in the select 2D texture uh, area, I'm going to go find this cliff albedo specular item. It should be part of the standard assets. I'm going to double click on that. Now this is my cliff texture, and you can determine how the cliff texture is applied by messing with these settings here under where it says texture slope. What these numbers mean are the angles at which the cliff texture starts and where the cliff texture becomes 100% essentially. So I can say I want my cliff texture to start at 35 degrees, and I want it to become a fully fledged cliff texture at 45 degrees. And pretty much what that does is once the terrain hits a 35 degree angle, it, it starts to blend into the, the cliff texture. And then by 45 degree angle, the entire thing will be a cliff texture. And now I've selected that, I want to add three more textures. So click add texture three times. And what I'm going to have is texture one, two, and three. Now each of these basically goes up from the ground up. So texture one would be the lowest level of texture. Texture two would be like a mid level and texture three would be the highest level. So now what we want to do is where it says texture one, we want to hit the select button. Now, since this is our lowest texture, I want it to be some kind of sandy texture. So let's find the sand albedo item, which should be part of the standard assets and double click on that. In texture 2, I want it to be some kind of grassy texture. Uh, so I'm going to go with Grass Hill Albedo. So now for the last texture, we want a snowy texture. I'm just going to use this uh, item called Swatch White Albedo. Since it's white, it should emulate snow decently well. So now um, what we can do using all these default settings, we can hit Apply Procedural Texture. And we'll see that overwhelmingly, it's just a bunch of sand. And the reason for this is because of the way our texture heights are set up. So the texture height is related to the height of your terrain map. So texture one, we want it to end much sooner than where it is because texture one is our sand and we see that it's overtaking everything. So I can drag the flag over to the left more and hit apply. And we'll see a little bit more green come out, but it's still too much sand. So the reason is because our second flag here, which dictates when our grass starts, it's too far up. So we're going to turn this more to the left, closer to the end of the sand texture. And we're also going to drag the second number two flag a little bit closer. Um, this is going to determine when that grassy area ends. And then our snow should start um, right after that grass texture. So now we hit the apply procedural texture. And we see more of the green coming out. Um, however, I still think I want a bit more. So I'm going to bring the one down lower, bring the two closer, and do that. And there we go. Now it's a little bit more green uh, coming out. And then our snow isn't quite showing up because uh, we don't really have any large peaks. And on that same matter, our cliffs aren't really showing up for the same reason. So to kind of expand more on this starting area that we got. I'm going to go under the terrain component and I'm going to hit raise and lower terrain. I'm going to start raising some of these areas so that they're a little bit higher, uh, specifically around the edges. I'm going to start raising these up 
so that we have an edge to our map that our player can't, you know, cross over. Okay, so now I've raised um, the walls around my my terrain a little bit so that we have more sharp peaks and stuff. So now if I hit apply procedural texture, you'll see a bit more of the desired effect. You can see how our cliff texture actually comes out now, and that's because these are sharper angles. So again, my cliff texture starts at 35 and then it blends into the cliff texture at 45 degree angles. Now, I still don't quite have snow on my caps, so what I'm gonna do is I need to bring the snow, uh, the texture three start even lower. So I'm gonna close in this second texture two flag and bring the three even closer there and hit apply. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit of white on those caps, but I think I still need more. So I'm gonna bring that three even closer and then drag that two flag a little bit farther over. And there we go. Now we're getting a bit more snow on the caps where we want them. So this is basically just takes a whole lot of fine tuning to get into to get it into a desirable state. Uh, and the idea behind the terrain toolkit is to basically give you a starting point to build out your terrain from and do more with it. It just makes it easier to sort of develop basic geometry and have a good starting point that you can then further, you know, model and customize to your liking. So now what I want to do is apply some erosion. So I can go under terrain toolkit and click erode and choose hydraulic and under preset, I'm just going to choose rain swept earth. And I'm going to leave that on the defaults and hit apply a hydraulic erosion. And it's going to apply that to my terrain. And you'll see it kind of gives things a little bit more of a realistic vibe. And uh, now I just want to move my box and my character into place. And I can hit play. And now we can see my terrain and everything in action. So you can see that my character is able to walk around on the terrain and he doesn't fall through or anything. And I can hit my box and it goes rolling and it will roll around on the terrain appropriately. Hold shift to run. And yeah, so this is essentially how you can uh, make terrain really quickly and easily in, in Unity. Um, you know, if you're looking to do a really large game or you're trying to do something commercially, you might be better off making terrain inside of a, a program like 3ds Max or Blender, or Maya, you know, whatever software you're using. However, I like to point out that Unity can do terrain. Um, you know, you can do everything within Unity if you really had to. So it's just, to me, I like using the terrain toolkit uh, primarily for the texture aspect. I like the procedurally generated textures and stuff, but again, if you want total control, you can always use the built-in terrain features to paint on trees and textures and things like that. For instance, I can go into place trees, I can hit edit trees and add, um, add a tree prefab like this conifer tree. And now using my brush, I can lower the size. First of all, I can start populating the terrain with trees and stuff like that. So there's a lot of power with terrain. Now I also want to show how to add a skybox into this scene. So by default, Unity 3D has this kind of gradient skybox. It's not really doing a whole lot. Uh, the way that you change the skybox, the easiest way is to go to Window and open up Lighting. And here on the Lighting menu, you'll see an option right here, right at the top, it says Skybox. And you can click the arrow to the, to the right of it. And you could add any sort of skybox you want. Now, pers now what I did on my project is um, I grabbed an asset from the asset store called Skybox Volume 2. So if you want to get those, hit Window, uh, go under Asset Store, and do a search for Skybox Volume 2. And you'll see there's a free skybox item here. Click on it, uh, download and import it. And once it's imported, you'll have uh, all these fancy skyboxes at your disposal. So the one I like to use was called DSB. I'm going to double click on that. And now you see already the skybox has been applied. 
And so if I run my game and I look around, now we've got this cool looking galactic skybox flying around in the air. It uh, looks pretty cool. It looks a lot better than the gradient we had, I think. Uh, there's a few other settings you can do with it. So like ambient source is the source of ambient light. So say I change this to color, watch, um, let me get a better view. Watch what happens on my terrain when I change this. You see how it becomes like an orangish glow? If you use the skybox as the ambient source, it's basically illuminating everything with this bluish tint that our skybox is. So that's kind of an interesting feature you can add on. Um, there's a reflection intensity, which will change sort of the ambient lighting for you. Reflection bounces. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different options under the lighting area that you can work with. You can also add fog if you want. And when you add fog, uh, you can see it adds this ridiculously intense uh, look. When I play my game now, everything's really, really foggy looking. I don't necessarily like that. I can always, I can always go in and change the intensity of that as well under the fog setting. So I can say like 0 0 .0, uh, 0 0.05 or 002, and there we get a little bit of a misty look, but not quite as intense as it was. I kind of prefer that style. And you can also change the color of the fog. So maybe I want like, I don't know, a, a bluish fog or something. I can go here and kind of change that fog to a, a bit of a bluish tone like such. And now if I play my game, I can see I have a bit more of a bluish tone about everything. So that's how you add a skybox, and that's how you um, work with fog and how you deal with terrain. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to go over uh, audio and using the audio mixer that's new to Unity 5.